You are listening to the Intelligent Vocalist Podcast, episode 119. Welcome to the Intelligent Vocalist with John Henney. This is the podcast dedicated to help you be a smarter, better, more informed singer. And now, your host for the Intelligent Vocalist, John Henney. Hey there, this is John Henney. Welcome back to another episode of The Intelligent Vocalist. I do so appreciate you spending your precious listening time with me. All right, I just got uh, my forthcoming book back from the editor, and I'm doing a bit of rewrite, so I'm having to go back through it. Got a little distance from it, because when you're in the writing process, you almost can't see uh, the forest for the trees. And you start to lose perspective on what it is that you've that you've written. And that goes for any creative endeavor. You need to, to take your first stab at it, get some space, and come back to it. So I'm able to come back to it with a bit more of a critical eye. And I'm I'm pretty happy with this book. I'm pretty excited. Uh, this book, this book is for voice teachers. So singers, my my next project is for you. It's gonna be a a, a full scale. Uh, course on belting, and I'm creating uh, original songs for you to sing that are going to be able to dial you in. I'm, I'm writing lyrics that use specific vowel sounds to help with different registers of the voice. I'm really excited about that as well, and that will be forthcoming. I will let you know when that gets close. But uh, this one is for teachers, and the book, the, the title is Voice Teacher Influencer, and I'll come up with a snappy subtitle. Still working on that. And uh, this book is about empowering voice teachers, uh, voice teachers to step up, let their voice be heard, to reach out, to gain their audience and build an audience of people that want to study with you, that, that want to learn what you have to teach in the way that you teach it. Uh, very often, voice teachers, because we're so focused on constantly improving, and often the better a voice teacher is, the more reluctant they are to step forward because a horrible thing called imposter syndrome starts to come in, and it tends to plague uh, really smart people, uh, academics. You look around, and, and the more you know, the more you realize you don't know, and this can become crippling. And unfortunately, some of the voice teachers, not, not to criticize, not all, but, but there are a few who are really good at the self-promotion uh, gig, who just aren't quite as good as teachers that I see who are more humble and quiet. So this is to empower you teachers. And uh, that's my surprise. I've got quite a few voice teachers listening to this podcast. Uh, it's, it's to empower you to help you get out there with your message and, and uh, work with the students you really want to work with, uh, have your point of view be heard, and to be able to create product and have a passive income. Uh, it's very hard for voice teachers because unless they're sitting behind the piano and they're working, they're not making money. And, uh, and as a voice teacher, you can make a good living, but there's, there's so much other work that goes along with it and scheduling and all these things. So passive income kind of becomes this golden ring that, that voice teachers long for, but very few achieve. And I want to help you do that. So I'm so looking forward uh, to getting that out there. I will be uh, looking for test readers very, very soon. If you would like to be a test reader, go to my website, johnhenny.com. Sign up for my email list. That is the only place where I will be announcing this, uh, where you can get an early copy of my book uh, for free. You're, all I ask is for feedback, and uh, if you so choose when the book is released, uh, to leave an honest review. Um, that's all I can ask for. Um, now, today, I want to dig into something that's really near and dear to me. Um, if you go back to my podcast, uh, episodes 60. Uh, five and six, uh, I talk about my journey to health. And uh, if you're not aware of it, I, I let myself get terribly obese. Uh, now I'm six foot seven. However, 
as far as I know, well, the, the, when I was still had the courage to step on a scale, uh, I was 370 pounds. And I know I got higher than that. So I was inching towards 400 pounds. And uh, as I got into my 50s, serious health considerations were coming into play. I was lucky enough. Um, I really didn't suffer, I think, because of my large frame. I didn't feel knee pain or back pain or any of that. But my blood pressure uh, was getting scary high. My top number, I know you're supposed to know both numbers, but uh, the top number I can remember was 158. It was nearing towards uh, 160. So they, I was being put on high blood pressure medication. Um, I had numbness, uh, pretty consistent numbness in my left hand and foot. I was developing gout, um, sleep apnea, reflux, all manner of manner of of disease was was starting to creep in, and I, I'm just I'm so thankful that I read the tea leaves. I, I I acknowledged the warning I was given in time, and I I worked with this uh, incredible coach by the name of Ray Cronice, who uh, coached me back to health. And I did it. it. What I did was rather crazy. Again, you can listen to the podcast, but in, I basically lost 150 pounds in eight months. And um, the, the rapid weight loss did affect my voice. Um, there, there were some side effects to it. But my blood pressure went um, in from 158 to 118 within a week or two. I mean, it was absolutely rapid, and the sleep apnea um, almost immediately disappeared, and the numbness went away almost immediately, um, and my energy levels, everything came back so quickly. And as a singer and a voice teacher, um, you need your energy, you need your health. Uh, you, you have to interact with people and so much of your interaction is your emotional energy and, and you need this vitality. When, when we watch people on stage, these people need to be vital and bursting with life and somebody, you know, limping out from gout and just sweating profusely, which I was often doing uh, at 370 plus pounds, even when it wasn't all that warm um, and huffing and puffing. It just, it's just not what audiences are really looking for. And you, you need this vitality and you need this health. And it really starts with diet. Man, food in my lifetime, I am now in my fifties and when I was a child, fast food was this rare treat uh, that you got. It wasn't all that cheap. You know, McDonald's was the one uh, before, believe it or not, before McDonald's came along and Ray Kroc, who then franchised it and, and created this behemoth of uh, fast food industry, uh, the burger places were kind of dicey and it was uh, it was kind of tufts with leather jackets and they'd play that rock and roll music and there'd be smoking and motorcycles and it was wasn't really a family environment uh, for the time back in the in the 50s and then came McDonald's and the other thing McDonald's did is it made it a family destination and it created a system where the food became cheaper and cheaper and faster and faster. And so now you can, um, for less than a, a typical hour's wages, drive up to a window. I mean, for le at minimum wage, for less than an hour's worth of minimum wage in this country, you can drive up to a window and you will be handed far more than a day's worth of calories uh, through this little window. Now, this was this is something we've never really had before, until very recent history. Um, before this this revolution, if you go back to the early 1900s, the vast majority of the family budget 
was spent on food. Food was incredibly expensive. And going back before that, malnourishment and starvation was the greatest obstacle we had to overcome. I mean, you did not have people uh, with these uh, chronic diseases of obesity, except for kings. They were the diseases of kings because they were the only ones that had this uh, plenty always available. And that's why uh, there was, you know, men who had money, they would, they would gain weight. And these rather stout men were attractive because that was a sign of power and, and wealth. Where now we, we live in a country where food is so inexpensive that it's actually uh, the overconsumption and the overnutrition that we're dealing with is a disease of, of the poor, which has never been in our, our history. And we are eating foods that we did not evolve to eat. And these processed foods, oh my gosh. Now, as I talk about this, here's the disclaimer. I'm not a nutritionist. I'm a voice teacher. So I can only talk from my experience. So please don't take my experience as medical advice. Right? Nothing I say here is, is medical advice. But um, in my experience and and dealing with this the, the food was so plentiful and it's so hyper palatable now it is so tasty uh, that it's very hard to stop eating it our brains uh, when confronted with this blast of sugar and salt and fat our brains just go on overdrive I mean, bacon, which is just uh, a bomb of sugar, salt, and fat, and french fries. These things are so incredibly delicious, and the brain takes in this, this burst of fat and sweet, and the brain's going, wow, this is a calorie source. Because our brains still think that we are starving That's and malnourished. We need to constantly seek out calories. So when it finds calories, your brain just goes, eat, eat, eat. And it's very hard to stop eating these foods. Now, in the last 50 years, the food industry has truly become an industry and they are constantly devising ways to hack into us. We are hackable. Um, this is a constant theme that I keep going on here, but, but please don't be so arrogant to think that you are not hackable. You are being hacked all the time, and your behavior is being driven by people who know exactly what they are doing, and the food industry knows what they are doing, and there are certain amounts and combinations of sugar, salt, fat that become very, very hard to resist. And you are being exploited. And the food industry, what they want you to think is the solution, is moderation and exercise. Well, that's common sense, right? Moderation and exercise. Because if they can get you to think, you know what, I just need to eat this fried chicken sandwich or these fries, or this chili burger, in moderation, I can control myself, and then I just need to exercise. That's the lie that they want to keep you going with, because it rarely, rarely works. This food, you are going to overconsume it, it is going to make you desire more, and you cannot outrun a poor diet. Ray Cronice, uh, the gentleman who coached me, has this thing called a calorimeter, and it's this uh, contraption, huge oxygen tank, and it goes over his mouth, and he breathes into it, and it can accurately tell him how many calories he is burning in an activity. And he walked the Sears Tower wearing this contraption, uh, all the stairs, and he burned the equivalent 
of three and a half Oreo cookies. That's it. And if you sit down with some Oreo cookies, I promise you, you are going to eat more than three and a half. And I can, I'm also pretty sure you're not going to climb the stairs of the Sears Tower or an equivalent uh, amount of physical exertion to burn off those calories. But yet, that's what we're told. We're constantly told moderation and exercise. And the other thing um, that they will do is they will fight every effort for uh, industries to step in with healthier alternatives. Uh, Plant-based meat substitute, they don't want the meat industry, does not want the word meat used. Uh, Almond milk, oats milk, uh, the dairy industry does not want them to be able to use the word milk, right? They want to protect what it is that they have. I switched to a whole food plant-based diet. And the reason that I refer to it as a whole food plant-based diet is people will ask me, am I vegan? Well, technically, yes. But here's the problem with uh, vegan and vegetarian diets. They are potentially the most unhealthy diet in the world. Uh, Sugar is one of the worst things you can put in your body. It is basically the food version of cocaine. It is so hyper-processed. There's nothing good left in it other than empty calories, and it's not good on your body. The excess oils uh, that you can have and the salt, and this is what um, the food industry does, the ones that want to make money off health-conscious Americans who decide, well, I'm going to go vegetarian or vegan. They create these meat substitutes to taste like uh, the junk foods that they're leaving behind. And what do they do uh, to replace the flavor of meat? They add sugar, salt, and fat in massive quantities. Right now, Beyond Burger is the big thing. And, and in this country, Burger King is running a campaign with the Beyond Burger. And yes, um, if you are concerned with animal welfare, you are certainly making a better decision uh, getting a Beyond Burger than a beef burger. There are arguments for uh, the environment and uh, global warming or climate change that getting uh, e- eating less meat will help there. But don't fool yourself that that this is a health food, okay? It's just a less junky junk food. You you really have to watch this. Now, what I did is I went to whole food, plant-based, and I consume little to no uh, sugar. Uh, There's a little bit of sugar in sriracha sauce. I allow myself sriracha sauce. I consume very little oil almost none. I consume uh, no white flour, no white rice. Once I lost my weight, I allow myself occasional cheat days. But here's the thing. I, I almost never take advantage of them. I think I've allowed myself in the almost two years since I lost the weight, four cheat days. And even then it was just some sushi. Uh, have not had pizza, have not had a burger, have not had fries. And when I got off these foods, I was miserable for about five weeks. I'll be honest, really miserable. Uh, But once the five weeks passed, I went, ah, okay, um, the cravings are dying down. And and this, this plant food without salt is actually tasting better and better to me. And then it took about five to six months and I completely preferred my new diet. And I no longer miss those foods at all. And there are certain foods, uh, The uh, and I apologize if you really enjoy this product and judging by the lines that I see, uh, because there's one right next to where I go grocery shopping, uh, many people do, but the smell of Chick-fil-A makes me sick. It's, I, and I, I can almost just smell the, the grease and I just wanna go to these people in line and just tell them, please don't do this to yourself. You know, I, I see 
children just eat, con- going to Starbucks and consuming. I mean, my gosh, we weren't allowed ca- a caffeine when I was a child. And I know things change, but these, these sugary, fat-laden drinks that Starbucks have come up with to serve to children that have as many calories as a, as a, a Big Mac and fries um, is just mind-blowing. And, and I'm seeing increasing levels of obesity in, in children. And the fact is, nobody, if, if you took your child to the liquor store to buy cigarettes, you would be considered the worst parent in the world. Yet, we now have more people dying of obesity-related illness than, than smoking. And smoking keeps dropping year after year, and obesity is on the rise. Now... I am not here to fat shame anyone, please. And, and this, this acceptance of who we are at this moment in our lives and this greater acceptance I, is a beautiful thing. Um, we need to no longer feel ashamed. Um, and there are performers that get on stage and they, they are able to be vital and they're able to give great performances. And they are not skinny. But for me, as I entered my 50s, the, the, it wasn't even about my body acceptance. It really became about my health. If you are struggling right now um, with your weight, with your food choices, I want to tell you something that clicked for me. I tried so many times to lose weight and I tried so many diets and all kinds of self-control and beating myself up and, and as I would look afraid to get on the scale and, and just buying larger and larger pant sizes. I mean, my gosh, I'll never forget when I went to the big and tall section of a, of a department store uh, to get a nice... Um, sports coat. And I was too big for anything they had in the store. I was, I was too big. I, they could not fit me. And that's those moments where you go to try on clothes and you think you're a certain size and, and you just have to keep getting bigger and bigger sizes. It's, it's, it's just, it's heart breaking. But the thing, um, that Ray said to me was, you're not broken. The food is. If you are struggling right now, if, if you are not feeling your best when you go on stage, if you're trying to get through a, a teaching day and you're, you're just exhausted and fatigued and, and then you go home and, and you eat food as a reward and when you finish the meal, you don't feel good about what you just ate and you want to beat yourself up. It's not you. It's this food. It's an industry that has created food to trap you. We, if you look at evolution as a, as a mile, modern farming is maybe just the last few feet of this mile, and then this explosion of processed cheap food is just the last inch or so. I mean, th- this, this is not what we evolved to eat. Our bodies don't know what to do with it. And then when you consider the microbiome, the bacteria within your gut that we now know is so essential to our health, you create poor bacteria colonies by eating bad food. If you can get your diet cleaner, your whole body will, will change and your, your bacteria is going to create more energy and more health for you. Uh, I want to recommend a book, uh, Ray Cronice and his partner, Juliana Hever. They have a book coming out uh, in December. It's called Health Span Solution. I will put a link to it on um, the show notes. Just go to johnhaney.com forward slash 119 for episode 119. 
But this isn't, isn't as much a diet book as a book on just getting healthy. And I want to make this not about losing weight. That, that's going to be a result of you getting healthier. But I just want you to have health. I want you to have energy and I want you to have vitality. Now, you don't have to do this plant-based. Um, very quickly, Ray has uh, devised this brilliant model called the Food Triangle. And at the top of the triangle, there are uh, plant foods with, with little to no calories, uh, things like onions and greens, like uh, kale, celery, mushrooms, very, very low uh, calorie density, but with tons of nutrition. And on the right side of this triangle, as you go down, you have uh, plant foods of increasing density. You start getting into the starchier vegetables, winter squashes into potatoes and, and beans or legumes. And then you finally get into um, the really uh, heavy uh, calories in, in nuts and oils. And then on the left side, you start at the top of the triangle with the, the low calorie vegetables. As you go down, that's the meat side and you have increasing levels of caloric density from, you know, very lean meats to then uh, starting to bring in fattier meats. And at the bottom, you start to get the, the, the processed meats and the, the plant products such as the dairy and the cheeses and creams and all that. If you stay on the right side and stay closer to the top of the triangle to lose weight and then you start, and when you're at the weight you want to be, you add then in more of the legumes and potatoes and, and grains and oats, whole grains. That's the whole food plant-based side. Little bit of nuts, um, and you can add fruit, but a little bit of nuts because uh, they're really good for you and seeds, but not too much because they're pr pretty calorically dense. You'll find health. If you decide to stay on the, the meat side, you're going to go more into uh, the traditional keto diet, um, which is very, very popular right now. So you, you have your asparagus and your mushrooms and your greens, and then you will add uh, the, the whole or, or the, the very lean meats. And that's where you lose weight. And then you can, you can carefully go a little bit down that triangle, but you don't, you don't want to get into those processed uh, fatty meats and cheeses. However, the bottom of the triangle, that's where the weight gain is. That's where the fast food industry is. That's where the food addiction, if you want to use that word, which we're not really always sure what it means, but that's where it is. And that's where we have processed grains, right? Uh, white flour and then fatty meats, which would be, and cheeses, lasagna, right? Uh, where you have cheeseburgers on big fluffy white rolls. That's where we gain weight, you know, steak and creamed spinach and potato, that's and bread, garlic bread. Oh my gosh, I remember going to this wonderful steakhouse and just gorging on that. And yeah, it was fun, but oh boy, was it just destroying my health. So, however, you want to structure this, stay towards the top of the triangle for your health. I just, I want you healthy so you can keep listening to me babble. You've got, you, you owe it to people, you, you owe it to your family and your loved ones, and you, you owe it to the people that, that enjoy your music and your singing, or that need your teaching and need your guidance. You need to get healthy. You are not broken, but man, this, this food, this Frankenstein food they've, that they've created is completely broken. I want to thank you for listening today. If you want more information about me, go to my website, johnhenny.com, and please sign up for my email list. I will be looking for those test readers for my upcoming book. And until next time, to better singing. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>